Hey, how you doing? This is Tim with GoldenGravelCycling.com. I have a eyeglass mirror for you uh, to take a look at today and talk about. I've taken this out on a couple rides and I've got some thoughts on it uh, that I want to share with you and um, see if maybe this is a good option for you if you're going out on some rides on the road and want to be a little bit safer with traffic. So I bought this because it's warming up outside. I'm starting to do uh, more of my training sessions. I've been mo doing most of my training sessions indoors. I'm starting to do more of my training sessions outside now. Uh, it's nice outside. Uh, spring in Missouri is, is, is pretty great. So try to take advantage of that time. But that also means I'm spending a lot more time on the road. We don't have a lot of gravel trails here close to my house. So uh, most of my training time, all of my training time is on the road. I'm going to be outside. So looking for ways to do that a little more safely. And I've got a couple options. And the one of the ones we're going to talk about today, the one we're going to talk about today is this uh, is this mirror. Um, this is uh, by Take a Look, um, the cycling eyeglass mirror. And it is designed to clip on to, um, let's see here, it's designed to clip on to uh, your eyeglasses or your bike helmet in one way or another. Um, and you can kind of decide how you want to do it. And this mirror here is fully adjustable. So you've got articulation in three different spots. So if you look here, um, you've got articulation in this direction. Here, you've got articulation in this direction. Here, and then you've got articulation with the actual mirror so that you can change the, uh, the tilt or the pivot on it, uh, just like that. So, um, the things I like about this mirror is it is really adjustable and so you can find um, some position where you're going to get some good information out of it while you're on the road. Um, the, also, the other thing I like about it is it's cheap. It's $15 uh, or less. It might be a little bit less than $15 uh, on Amazon right now. And if you don't have anything at all, it's better to have something than nothing. Um, it does make your ride more enjoyable because then you don't have to worry quite so much about cars. You don't have to be looking over your shoulder quite so much. You can focus more on your ride. Um, if you're doing a lot of commuting, uh, this is a great option because um, it's cheap. You don't really need anything else. Uh, you just need to be able to keep track of the traffic that's around you and be able to ride your bike. Uh, my main focus is riding uh, for training, and so that does complicate things with this a little bit, and we'll get that into a second. So um, let's see, good optics. Um, when you get this set up in the right position, uh, you can see things really well, and they're very crisp and clear. So. The optics on this mirror um, are really well done, and I've, I've been really impressed by that because it does just, you, it looks like you're just looking right over the top of your shoulder. It doesn't look uh, out of focus or, or hard to focus on. It actually is really quite natural. So um, I do like those things about it. I like that it works the way that it's supposed to, and I like that the, the actual images you get off of it's really good. So what are some of the things that uh, I, I don't care for as much? So uh, one of the things I was hoping with this is that I would be able to put it on, um, uh, my eyeglasses and then I would just be able to look up in the top corner of my vision and just be able to see straight over the top of my shoulder. With this compact version I found that it doesn't really work quite that well. I'd hoped that that would be the case that I basically just have a corner of my vision that was just looking right over my shoulder. In reality I have a corner of my vision that's looking right at the side of my head, right past the side of my head and what that means is is that I'm actually looking out kind of just barely out into the middle of the road. So what you're actually seeing is just a sliver of your, your lane and then mostly actually out into the opposing lane going in the opposite direction. And uh, that means you still have to turn your head a little bit. It's really only like five degrees to 10 degrees of actual uh, turning your head, which is a lot better than actually having to do that and, and safer and saves you a lot of time. And, and you're also not taking your eyes off the road up here as much. So <clears throat> big improvement, no doubt about it, but it didn't quite hit what I was hoping for there because I really wanted to be able to just look up in the top corner and see what uh, what I was looking at. I found the other option, that thing I didn't care for about this is that I found that these pin clips here that are meant to uh, basically just kind of create a friction hold on whatever it is that you clip them to, it does kind of limit your options. The only things I was able to get this to clip to uh, were my, <clears throat> these are my truck sunglasses that I drive around with every day. I don't actually ride my bike with these normally, but um, <clears throat> they have a thinner um, earpiece on them. And so I was able actually to get these to clip on. And when you do that, it looks something like, like that. And it works well enough. And you can see over your shoulder, it works great. Um, they do not work with my race or my riding glasses because the earpieces on them are quite a bit larger and there's just not enough room to make that work. So unless you're going to ride with something that has a thinner earpiece like this, you're stuck working with your helmet. <clears throat> what I found with the helmet is that 
really the only place that I can actually get this to go is on my visor attachment. And on my visor attachment, because it's pitched in a different direction, you're actually left with a horizontal field of view like that, as opposed to a, or a vertical field of view, excuse me, as opposed to a horizontal field of view. And this is hard to get right, and it doesn't give you as much space. So you're not using as much of the mirror, because a lot of the mirror is looking out into the air, and you're not actually seeing as much of the road. So I didn't find the information that I got from that to be all that useful. The only way that I found it to really be helpful is if you actually have it in a horizontal position uh, as opposed to a vertical position. But if you get it that way, it does give you a good image. Um, and then the last thing I, I, I that uh, I didn't care for about it is that... Uh, it does leave you with a little bit of a blind spot. So if you think of your uh, vision as nine coordinates, um, you Brady Bunch your vision here, the, the top coordinate up here, your top ninth um, on your, uh, on your, maybe your left hand side, uh, is basically just this. That's really all you're seeing. Uh, and for the most part, you don't actually care about that area of your vision because you really only care what's right here and then basically left to right. And, and for the most part, that's really all that matters. And sometimes kind of up here, depending on how much you're, you're bent down on your bike. Um, but I did find I was writing, I was, when I was writing out today, that there was one situation where I was taking a right-hand turn um, and there was a pickup truck that was taking a left into the same intersection that I was going into. And for a reasonable amount of that turn, this mirror blocked my ability to see that pickup truck. I could not see him. Uh, I had to actually physically turn my head around so that I could get my eye on the pickup truck to see if he was turning in behind me or if he was going to follow me in real closely. And uh, I, that actually was kind of a problem because I needed to make sure that he knew I was there and that he was going to uh, stop for me to make that turn. And uh, this did blind me for a short period of time and force me to kind of make some adjustments on how I was looking at him. And uh, so it does create kind of create a blind spot. It's only come up once in my ride, um, but I've ridden this with this twice and it it did come up once, so maybe it'll happen a lot. I don't know. Uh, so those are the things I was concerned about with. But overall, uh, for fifteen dollars, um, this is a really good option. I mean, it, it does solve the problem. It does give you an option for being able to see traffic coming up from behind you, um, and um, and that and that works really well. So who would I recommend this for? Who do I think this is a good solution for? As I mentioned earlier, I think if you're a commuter or you do a lot of light riding on the road, um, or you're a well-trained rider and you can ride up the road at a reasonable pace. Um, and uh, I think this is probably a good solution. If you're looking for a budget option, I think that this is really good. Um, if you're kind of like me and you're doing training rides on the road and you're 15 minutes into uh, an anaerobic or you know aerobic borderline effort and you're in oxygen debt and your legs are barely working, much less your brain, you're, you're gonna have a hard time processing anything out of what this mirror is telling you. So, um, that's not a fault of the mirror, that's just the reality, the way it is. If you're at that point and you're doing a lot of training on the road, uh, my recommendation would be to go to, up to a radar, um, and I'll explain more about those in my next video. I'm going to be talking about uh, Varia radars, or Garmin's Varia uh, radar here um, pretty soon. I've got, I'm working on a video on that. Um, so subscribe if, you, uh, if you're interested in seeing that. But <clears throat> if you got $15 um, and uh, you're wanting to get out on the road and you're worried about vehicles, you're going to be interacting with a lot of traffic, that's a really good option uh, to go with. I'll put a link in the description if you want to take a look at it, uh, give it a try. I might go ahead and just try buying the uh, the full size version and see if that uh, fixes some of my concerns with uh, with this one, especially the over the shoulder thing. But um, do you have any other questions or anything else you want to know about it? Uh, please leave me a comment and and let me know. And check out um, my Facebook page and my website goldengravelcycling.com and uh, take a look there for more content. And uh, like, like I said, like and subscribe if you like this and you want to see some more. So thanks for your time and uh, see you in the next video. Bye.